Hey everyone, Tim Schofield here, and it's finally official. Google has announced what Android 9 is going to be called, along with rolling out the official update to the Pixel 2 and Pixel 2 XL. So if you have one of those devices, check for updates. My Pixel 2 XL hasn't received it yet, but my Pixel 2 has the official Android 9 Pi update. So yes, the official name is Pi. Seems pretty plain considering there's no flavor involved. The official image shows the Android uh, guy with cherries however they could have gone with pumpkin pie uh with it being android p uh starting with the letter p android pumpkin pie would make sense but anyways it is pie which kind of makes sense they they were able to incorporate they have a feature coming out called slices with the android 9 and of course they've also mentioned easy as pie with android 9 so there's some other puns that they can use now anyways the real question is what android q is going to be called next because that is the next letter of the alphabet hard to come up with some sort of treat but I think we all know what Android Q is going to be called. Anyways, I want to go ahead and jump into the official Android 9 Pi update, talk about everything that's new, including a completely revamped system navigation, along with some AI features as well. I will also be revisiting the Pixel 2 and Pixel 2 XL in a future video. Uh, vote on which one that you would like to see me revisit now that the Android uh, Pi update has come. But anyways, let's go ahead and talk about the official Android 9 Pi update. Let's get started. Here is my Pixel 2, and I did just install the official Android Pie update. You will see here up at the top, Android version 9. You can quickly press on that, uh, and you do get to this Easter egg screen that did not change from the beta at all, so this is what it looks like. Throughout the video, you will notice some aesthetic changes as well to the update. Just the whole quick settings panel got a revamp along with other things, including the settings menu. You'll see that in just a second. But overall, let's talk about the system gestures. So first of all, you just have the one pill down at the bottom. So what do you do to get to your home, uh, to your recent apps? You just swipe up from that pill. You get some app suggestions down at the bottom, the Google search bar. And then you have your recent overview of recent apps that you have open. Now there's a quick way to quickly swap between apps. You just go ahead and quickly swipe to the right and it will just go ahead and quickly swap between your last two open. Very easy to multitask and switch between the two. You can press and hold and actually swipe over between different ones. You'll see I'm holding and this bar shows up down at the bottom where I can swipe through all of these apps. Or of course, if you swipe up, you can just kind of swipe through with your finger. Something really nice is within an app, you can actually swipe up and swipe up again to get to your app drawer, or you could just do a long swipe to get to your app drawer, which just kind of makes it easier and less of a step to have to tap the home button and then swipe up to get to your uh, app drawer. You also see down at the bottom, there is a back button that pops up and that's only on specific screens that you can go back on. Otherwise, if you're on your home screen, you'll see that back button disappears. Now it does take a little bit to get used to, but I actually like the swiping gestures. I like them on other phones as well. Uh, if you do want to actually go back to a button to get to your recent apps, you can just go into system gestures and instead of swipe up on the home button, just turn that off and you will actually reactivate all three buttons down at the bottom. So you can get those back if you would like to, and you tap on it, you get to the new overview screen, but you can still get to it via a button. And then no matter if you have the swipe up gesture or not, pressing and holding on the home button will activate the Google Assistant. Next, let's talk about some of those AI settings that Google is implementing into Android Pie. First of all, adaptive battery, and that's found within the battery settings. And uh, what it's going to do is make note of the apps that use more than others and the ones you use infrequently, and it will prioritize the apps you use more for battery life. So it should help adapt over time and make your battery life even better. Uh, again, I'll need to test this out and check out my revisited video once uh, that comes out. Next up, would be within display settings. I'm really excited about this one. It's the adaptive brightness that got a bit of an update. So what's going to happen is it's going to remember your manual settings based on the amount of light, the conditions that you are in, and then just go ahead and tweak it as time goes on. So let's say I turn this all the way up, which it is because I'm in a very bright light scenario. It's going to probably remember that. So when I'm in the same condition, it's probably going to bump it back up. So I think over time, you're going to make need to make note to actually manually change it. Uh, as you're doing different things, as you're in different lighting scenarios. But I think over time, you'll eventually not need to touch it anymore because it will remember everything you've changed. There's a couple other AI settings that haven't shown up on my phone, one of them being App Actions. And that's going to learn your uh, usage of your phone and suggest specific actions when you open up that app drawer. You'll see here next to me it being shown off. And also another one 
called slices. And that's when you go ahead and go into the Google search bar and type in lift as the example is showing. And it's going to say, here's how much it's gonna cost. Here's how long it'll take to get to your specific locations. So just different things and other options within apps that you can customize and it will actually learn your behaviors. This next feature is a small one, but I think one of the better ones coming to Android 9, and I'm not sure why Google isn't promoting it more. It has to do with auto-rotate. And as a side note, that auto-rotate icon definitely looks like a retweet button on Twitter. Uh, feel free to follow me there and retweet anything you'd like to. Always appreciated. Uh, but you'll see I have it off. Um, I most likely will always leave it off. I do not want auto rotate on anymore because of this great feature. So watch what happens when I rotate my phone is specifically at the bottom here. So I'm gonna rotate it and check out that icon that pops up and you'll see obviously auto rotate off. It didn't rotate my screen, but I just simply tap that button and it will go ahead and rotate the display. There we go, same thing vertically or horizontally, uh, which is nice because I find that a lot of times it will just it might be laying on my side or something, and it will just rotate for me, but this way, if, uh, if I don't want it to actually rotate, it won't, but I can actually activate it if I need to. So I think this is going to be one of the better features. And again, as I mentioned, aesthetically, things have changed. The clock is now in the upper left-hand corner. When I swipe down, of course, those quick settings are a little bit different as well. Just overall, icons are a bit, are a bit different. I'm noticing when I press and hold on the home, home launcher, uh, this bubble will pop up specifically where I actually press and hold on the display. The home launcher still has the Google Now settings on the far left side. And of course, as I mentioned, uh, it does have the app drawer with a swipe up and suggested apps up at the top, which you can actually turn off via your home settings. You will also see that the contact images are shown within the thread in your notifications. Uh, which is really nice, makes it look really clean. Also, the Google Messages app is going to start having smart replies, so you'll start to see that rolling out within your notification shade. Within display settings, you can go to advanced and you will see device theme. Now, don't get too excited. There's not necessarily a system-wide theme. If I do select dark, it actually will just essentially theme uh, the quick settings panel right here. So hopefully they will roll out some sort of system-wide dark mode in the future that is not there yet. Uh, but you will see you can also have it be automatic based on wallpaper or just switch it to light or dark. The ambient display got a bit of an update. You'll see it shows the time, it shows the date along with the weather, if you have any notifications. And then down at the bottom, you do have the battery percentage along with if a song's playing, it does have now playing still on the Google Pixel. I am noticing there's a bit of a vibrate now when you actually pull down the notification tray, just a very subtle vibration that it has, uh, but you can feel it. Uh, you can press hold the power button. That power menu is now on your right side, very easy with one-handed use with a screenshot right there. Also, pressing the volume buttons activates media sound controls by default. So it doesn't necessarily use your ring volume anymore. You can actually tap on this icon to just mute your specific media by default. Tap on this icon to switch between vibrate, silent, and ringer, or you can press the settings button and go into all of your sound settings. There's also a quick shortcut to set it to vibrate mode. Press volume up and power button, and it will actually uh, switch to vibrate only. Text selection got a really nice update. I am a big fan of it. So if I go ahead and press on one of these icons, you'll see a magnifier pop up. So you can really see and specify the type of text that you would like to select overall, you let go, you get all your uh, standard options, translate, search, share, select all, click, copy, paste, all that good stuff. And it works while you are in overview mode. So you'll see here, I can go ahead and select some text while in my overview mode. And this is great because it works with smart text selection. For those of you unfamiliar with smart text selection, it's actually one of the better features of Android. When you select text, it actually recognizes what you're selecting there. It thinks it's a phone number. I can go ahead and press call and it'll go straight to my dialer. If I go ahead and select this, you'll see it's selecting all of the text as well and brings up an email because it recognizes that it's an email address. And then this one might not work. Oh, it does. So I put 123 Oak Street and it recognizes, hey, that's an address. Do you want to open it in maps? So really awesome and it works in that overview screen. Now, something Google is coming out with in the fall, it's actually in beta right now. I will make a video on the beta once I get it on my phone, so stay tuned for that. It's called Digital Wellbeing, and there's going to be a dashboard to talk about what apps you use the most. You'll have an app timer to kind of limit the amount of time that you spend on apps if you so choose. Do Not Disturb will add a couple more features, including a wind down mode. When you select it, your uh, screen blue light filter will activate and then eventually transition into completely grayscale. 
So anyways, that's just about everything I wanted to show off for the Android 9 Pie update. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to click that thumbs up button. Be sure to subscribe as well. A lot more coverage coming on Android 9 in the near future. Stay tuned for that. Uh, and as always, guys, thank you very much for watching.